In this video, we're going to learn how to georeference using ArcMap. There are quite a few cases where we've got some source, a uh, historic map or some other paper map that we need to get into Arc uh, to do analysis, to digitize something from, and use georeferencing to do that. So we've used a scanner to scan a map of historic mammal distributions that we're going to use to digitize polygons. So I need to get this scan into ArcMap. The key is, is that this image, this JPEG that we have, uh, has no spatial information. We don't know where it is on the surface of the Earth. The software doesn't know, uh, so we need to get it in the right place. Again, that's called georeferencing. So we're going to um, pull up ArcMap here. And I've done a little work in advance. Uh, the main thing is that I tried to match the coordinate system in that image as best that we could. Uh, the book didn't have any information, so we had to go by, by look and experiment with a couple of conic projections in this case to see if we could find one that matched. We didn't find something perfect, but we came up with something relatively close with this conic projection, close enough for the purposes of this project. So I've pulled that up. I've also, I also noticed in that map that it had both uh, Canadian provinces and states, so I, I'm using that as a, a reference. Uh, again, that I need to look at points on the the scan map and points in the real world and line them up. So in ArcMap, one of the first things we want to do is we want to add the georeferencing toolbar. So if you haven't done so already, right click on um, the gray area in the toolbar and select the georeferencing toolbar and perhaps the snapping that we may use later to get points to line up. Next, we will add the image, the scan of our map, our JPEG. And when I add that, I'm going to get an error saying that it has no spatial reference, so it doesn't know where to put it. We know that, so we can ignore this warning for now. Uh, it adds it to our table of contents over here, but it doesn't know where to place it on the map, so it doesn't line up, of course. So here we go to our, our georeferencing toolbar, and the first thing that we're going to do is kind of do a rough fit. And this is the fit to display option. And so it takes the extent of my scan and throws it over the top of my current map. Horrible alignment difficult to figure out what's going on. Uh, obviously I need to rotate this, so under georeferencing I'm going to rotate it to the right again to get a rough fit. And again, we're nowhere near lining that up. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, I can either turn some of this stuff off or go to the original image and look for points uh, kind of that box in the area that I'm interested in digitizing. So we're interested in digitizing kind of in, in this portion of the map. So I want some points here, here, here and here approximately to use as control points so that this area in the middle is as accurately georeferenced as possible. And I'm not worried about these inset maps to the side. So our next step is to put in control points. And so up here in the georeferencing toolbar is the option to add control points. And this is going to be uh, the option that allows me to select something on the scanned map and something on my GIS layer and get them to line up. So I select that tool, and I'm going to use this northeast corner of Alberta. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can be somewhat precise in doing this. My control points, select that point here, and then find it on my layer. And I've got snapping turned on, so I can snap to that vertex uh, pretty precisely. And then by default, the georeferencing tool auto adjusts the underlying map. So it starts to line it up as I add these control points. I'm going to zoom back out to my original extent and see that that corner of Alberta lines up. Um, but obviously, I, I need to scale this some more. So I need another control point to get anywhere close. So let's use the southwest corner of California here and see how close we can get with that. Again, I'll zoom in to where I can see both of those. Switch to my control point. Select the corner on the scan, and then find it on my map. See if I get the right vertex or somewhere close. OK, and then auto adjust. Uh, and just with those two control points, I'm, um, I've got some that's pretty good. Uh, if I look at the area that I'm interested in, I've got pretty good alignment with the underlying map. Looks like a little bit of shift to the, the north and to the east. So let's add a couple more control points. It uh, looks like down here in the corner of New Mexico is a good place for that. Click this corner here, and then snap to that corner. If the snapping's getting in your way, 
you can turn on and off uh, vertex or edge or point snapping, snapping to avoid uh, snapping to the wrong location. All right, a little bit better, and it looks like I need a control point on the northwest side here. So let's look around Washington and see what we can find. Um, since the maps were drawn at different scales, it's a little bit difficult to get a perfect match. Let's use the border between Canada and the U.S. here. Now once I get to a certain number of control points, it averages out the error between them as it stretches and transforms this map. So these aren't, like, particularly on the fourth, fifth, and sixth ones, these aren't going to line up perfectly. Um, and since my projection doesn't line up perfectly, I'm not going to get this perfectly. So my suggestion for this is an affine transformation where all it does is rotate and scale in order to line up the two. We're not rubber sheeting this at this point in time. Uh, it's just good adding no more than like six control points. So I'm going to add just one more here for California. So I see a small shift, but not a perfect one. And that's probably about as good as I'm going to get without increasing the uh, order of my transformation. If I screwed up on one of these control points, I can go to the view link table here and see each of the control points that I've created and I can select one of them and delete it if I want to. Uh, if I want to go into higher order transformations, I can uh, do that here. And I can also look at the overall error, the root mean squared error of my transformation so far. So those didn't line up quite right. It's pretty large at the scale of a continent, um, but for our purposes, that's going to be good enough. So once you're happy with your transformation, in order to make it permanent, there's two different options for that. One is I can rectify it, which will uh, take the original image and uh, project it into this new coordinate system. Or I can hit update georeferencing, and that will create what's called a world file in my, with my JPEG. So for our purposes for this, that's going to be good enough. So I'll update georeferencing. And if I go back to File Explorer, I'll notice that I have a world file, this JGWX, that when I load this map, or this image into ArcMap the next time, it will recognize and use that world file and it will line up to the same degree that it does now. So best of luck. Um, for newbies doing this, it's going to take you at least a couple times. So I would suggest doing it, erasing your transformation, and starting over a couple times before you decide that you figured out the tool and make it permanent. Enjoy.